in my parts. Okay, so here's uh, when you can do it. Um, if you're in the situation where you're taking a polynomial term, it doesn't have to be a single term, it could be a multiple term polynomial, uh, times an exponential. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be e, but in most cases it's going to be e. Um, and then a, another option would be a polynomial term. Uh, now this is generically says a trig term. But more specifically, it's usually going to be something that you can quickly uh, take the derivative of or integral of. So, so sine or cosine, basically. Maybe not exactly sine of x and cosine of x, but you know, maybe sine of 5x or something. Like that. But, uh, but sine or cosine, generally, um, when I say trig. Tangent, you can't really integrate that readily, uh, quickly. And so that's not really going to be it. When I say trig, it's kind of too vague. Really just say sine or cosine. I'm just a uh, single. Equal multiple of x. Okay, so here's our example: x squared e to five x prime candidate. It is uh, a polynomial, and in general, basically, it's, it's this: that uh, the power on your polynomial will dictate to you how many times you have to go through integration by parts. We just saw it. Went through once, we went down to x. Went through again, the x wasn't there anymore. You know, had it been x cubed, we'd have a third time through. But okay, great. So here's the shortcut. Here's how it works. Maybe this step by step blow by blow on how to do it. Here we go. Ready? First blow. Here we go. First step. Differentiate the polynomial down to zero, right? It's a polynomial. Differentiate it enough times until you get a zero. So first up, I start with x squared, and I go 2x. Do it again. I get 2. Integrate again. I mean, differentiate again, and I get zero. Great. Step one is done. Step two. Integrate the other part, the same amount of times. So this can get a bit troublesome. You just have to be careful. Here it's e to 5x. Do it once, you get a fifth. Do it again, you get a 25th, right? A fifth and a fifth. Do it again, you get a fifth, a fifth, a fifth. You get 1 over 125. We integrated the same amount of times. So we're at the same level as the zero. It took us, uh, it took us down to that level. Now, final, well, this is the final step, but the crucial part. How are you going to put together these parts? You do the following. You multiply these two different parts along diagonals that are going down and to the right. You're going to start at the top. And when you make this multiplication, you must also apply a sign after multiplying. Okay? What sign do you apply? You apply the sign according to the following uh, set up. Basically, uh, you're going to alternate which sign to apply. You're going to start with a plus, and then a minus, then a plus, on, and then continue that on however many times you need to. Generally, this will be enough. Okay. So what, once I multiply x squared by 1 fifth e to 5x, I associate a plus sign with that. But when I multiply 2x by 1 over 20 fifths uh, e to the 5x, I apply a negative to that multiplication. And this so nicely does the v, uv minus v du. That's where that minus comes in. And that's why it's only on the second part and not on the first part. The uv is a plus, but the minus v du is the minus. And then this is another time through. They could put it as our double minus. We had a minus and another minus. That's why it's a plus. Anyway, in no time flat, we have the antiderivative. We have the three terms to the antiderivative in no time flat. It's magic. Voila. Magic. Okay. It's called the shortcut to integration by parts. I'm not going to give it a funny name like tabular or uh, tic-tac-toe, whatever. I'm just going to call it integration by parts shortcut. Okay. And it's wonderful. It saves you a lot of work. Take advantage of it when you can. Be on the lookout for it. Polynomial times an exponential, or polynomial times sine or cosine. Okay. Great.